Hi hey everyone, welcome to another Monday Morning Stella! <clears throat> look at the day, I know I say it a lot Jack, but look at the day. <coughs> Pretty good. You know, I always think of places to go film and then, it's like at the beach really, <laughs> there's something about it. All right. Today I want to talk about Bill Porter. Now many years ago I shared the story of Bill Porter, but I, I feel like I need to talk about it again today. So it's a shortened version, but it's a pretty cool story and there's a reason I want to share it with you. So Bill was born with multiple sclerosis, no, cerebral palsy. And when he was born, young parents, the doctors said that they should put him in, in an institution. So give him away, put him in an institution because he was that badly um, handicapped. And, but his mum instinctually just said, no, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna give this kid the best life I can. So she dedicated her life to him. As he grew up, as he was in school, uh, he turned, his dad was a salesman, and he turned around and said to his mum one day, halfway through the school time, and said, mum, I wanna be just like dad, I wanna be a salesman. And being a mum, she's like, yep, yeah, Bill, you can do anything that you wanna do, but in her heart, she, she knew there was no way that he could because he just, he couldn't walk properly and, and other things which I'll, I'll share with you in a sec. So as he was getting older and just about to leave school, he, that thought pattern didn't change. And he said, mum, I definitely want to be a salesman and I don't just want to be a salesman, I want to be the greatest salesman. And she tried to talk him out of it. She said, Bill, is there anything else you'd like to do? And, you know, knowing that you know, he's in, he's in for a lot of rejection and he wouldn't be able to get a job anyway. So it's just the way that it was. So, but she said, Bill, you do whatever you feel you want to do and you have my total support. So he applied for jobs everywhere. No one would give him a job. And then Bill said, well, instead of applying for jobs everywhere, I just only want to work for this company, which is the largest sales company in America. That's the only one he wanted to work for now. And he convinced the chairman, CEO, to have an interview with him. Now Bill, just so you know, his hand was totally clenched like this and he had no use of it and he couldn't walk properly. So he was like dragged, he dragged his left foot and he couldn't speak properly either. So he's like that, you know, so he's, he didn't have much movement of his mouth or proper movement of his mouth. Um, so he wasn't the best candidate for sales person back then and in the 50s it was door-to-door -door sales. So I don't know. He, he got a, a job with the, no, he got a uh, interview with the CEO and the guy said, look, there's just no way I can employ you. And he said to the chairman or whatever, he said, all I want is an opportunity. That's it. I just want to give you an, op I just want an opportunity from you. And if you can give me this opportunity, I will not let you down. Something along those lines. And the chairman said, all right, why don't we do this? I'll give you a job, but if it doesn't work and it doesn't happen, then we shake hands and part ways and that's that. And he said, done. So what they did, um, Bill asked for the worst area. So they all had areas to go farm. And Bill said to the chairman, just give me the area where nobody is your worst area. And that's what he did. So off he went and he packed his bag, his sales kit, and he walked, put his hat on, walked from door to door to door to door. Now I want you to picture it, like walking like that, you know, is not easy. All day, knocking on people's doors. People weren't sure about Bill because he was, you know, so had such limitation, they would scream at him, they would yell at him, they would call him all sorts of names. These are residents in the house. They would chase them off their property. All sorts of things, day after day after day after day. His mum used to make him lunch and write messages on his sandwich like, keep going, keep smiling, all this sort of stuff. Anyway, time went on. People, and he would do it, raining, sunny, hot. He would just keep going. And people would see this in, in the neighborhood that he kept prospecting. And over time, people started to see that how persistent this guy was and he would just keep knocking on the doors, copying the abuse. 
sometimes people, over time, people would try and buy things from him because they felt sorry for him and he actually wouldn't take the sale because he knew it wasn't genuine. So back then you used to carry two suitcases with all of your wares in it, go knock on the doors and sit in the lounge room and present. And you know, Bill trying to present with his cards and he's trying to talk and all this sort of stuff. Month after month, year after year, Bill just kept going. And over time, people started to, to like him, people started to connect with him, and people started to see that he was there to actually provide a solution to them. He started to sell product as the years moved on. And as time progressed, Bill Porter became the number one salesperson in that company. There were 3,000 salespeople in that company at the time. Bill Porter was number one. Now, the reason I share that story with you is what excuse do you have to not be ultra successful? Bill Porter had an impulse inside of him since he was a kid to be a salesperson. That impulse was way bigger than the limitations that he had and his mindset was that he could do it. So we get up every day and we whinge that it's raining or we whinge that this has happened or uh, you know, we don't have the best car or we don't have the, whatever. I want you to think about Bill Porter this week and I want you to think about why he achieved what he did. Understand that 3,000 salespeople, that's three times as many salespeople as is in McGrath. I just got number one salesperson in McGrath, took me 15 years. Bill Porter got number one salesperson in America for that company with three times as many people. What the heck? What excuse do you have? Why did Bill Porter achieve what he did? Because he was hungry. He was so hungry that his limitations become almost non-existent. They were there and he had to manage them, but he didn't let the limitations stop him. His mindset was way bigger and way more powerful than the things that could potentially stop him. So what excuse do you have? I want you to think about this this week and I also want you to think about what is it that you really want? What is it that you're prepared to do? And how much more able are you than Bill Porter to achieve your goals? You're already halfway in front. Let's get into this week. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward. See you on the next video.